chorus of young women, the daughters of Jerusalem, have just said to her, we will rejoice with you. And she is aware of them now looking at her, and it makes her very uncomfortable. Let's read what she says. Young women of Jerusalem, I am dark, but lovely, like Kedar's tents, like Solomon's curtains. Because if anyone gets close to the king, if anyone enters the king's chambers in that brilliant light, everything that's dark in them becomes uh, obvious. And she is not comfortable with people looking at her in this place because she knows now how dark her heart really is. She is beginning to see what was in her that he had to die for, that in her there was no good thing. But, she says, I am dark but lovely because he made her and everything God made was good. She has a quality, she, the very essence of her is lovely. What he put in her is lovely. And she's aware of it now, like Kedar's tents, which were black, like Solomon's curtains. I thought at one time that Solomon's curtains were white, but as I did my research, I realized they might have been gold, or they might have been blue and red, a royal color. They were royal, they were beautiful. Stop staring at me, because I am so dark. The sun has tanned me. My brothers were angry with me. They made me caretaker of the vineyards. I've not even taken care of my own vineyard. Please tell me, you whom I love, where do you graze your flock? Where does your flock lie down at noon? Tell me, or I will be considered a prostitute wandering among the flocks of your companions. She is so aware of her sinfulness. She is not comfortable with people staring at her. She feels rejected by her brothers. She feels overworked and full of personal neglect. It's interesting that a brand new believer runs into the church and there's so much work to be done in the church that she, is, she finds, finds no end of things to do. But while she's busy, 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 she's not getting the time she needs to work on her own vineyard. And sometimes we want to get so busy because uh, reflecting on ourself and dealing with the things that we have going on in our own life is, makes us very uncomfortable. It's much easier to focus on other people's situations. But this is not <laughs> very healthy for her. It leaves her tired. It leaves her uh, feeling inadequate and it leaves her feeling distant from Jesus. She feels like she's watching him far away and there's others that she knows, she sees them, that they're close to him and that's where she wants to be, right up close. So she knows that there's a flock that follows him, that's transparent but loved, who's fully known but fully loved, who's being fed and who's being transformed and that's where she wants to be, part of that flock. And interestingly enough, the chorus of young women answers her correctly. If you do not know, O beautiful of women, most beautiful of women, follow the tracks of the flocks and graze your young goats near the shepherd's tents. If you're hungry for an intimate walk with God, look for those that are close to him and follow them. Find a mentor, find someone who has found the secret of abiding in Christ and get close to them. Don't leave the fellowship. Stay right where you are. There are things that God has to teach you right there. She grows in her understanding and her experience of what it meant for Jesus to die for her. All the things that were wrapped up in that package. While the king was, is at his table, my perfume fills the air with its fragrance. The knowledge that God valued me so much that he died for me, that he went to the cross for me, changes everything about me. It changes the way I see myself. I'm one that's treasured. I'm valued by God. And that makes my perfume, or the essence of Christ in me, fill the air with its fragrance. My beloved is a pouch of myrrh that lies at night between my breasts. Myrrh was a low-lying bush found in the 
Arabian Peninsula. And when it, its trunk was cut, uh, teardrops of amber sap would form. And they would gather these, people would gather these and crush them, and it gave off this fragrance. And this is where myrrh came from. It's a very expensive and rare smell, very beautiful smell. It was used in the temple, and it was used for burial. What she's saying is, my beloved is a pouch of myrrh. He died for me, and the death of Christ is something that lies deep within my heart. I'm aware of it all the time that he valued me enough to die for me. My beloved is a bouquet of henna flowers in the vineyards of En Gedi. It's not just one flower. It's a whole bouquet. It's a whole gamut of good things that come out of Jesus' death on the cross. He didn't just die to get us to squeak out of hell and into heaven. It's just not a ticket to heaven. No. His death brought about life inside of the person so that that person that receives Jesus Christ as their Savior then begins to experience what life is really all about. They were born to live like this. They were born to be forgiven and to walk with God and to hear Him and to know that He hears them, to walk in communion to live the life that God planned for them to have from the beginning, free, free from sin, free from selfishness and smallness and a bitter heart. He died so that we can have so much richness in our life. It, it should affect all of our relationships, especially the people in our home. Our relationships should be richer, more deeper, more intimate because of Jesus. And the groom looks at her. Now remember, she's not mature yet. She's just a new believer. She's got a lot of problems. She's got a lot of things that he's going to work through with her. But he loves her at every stage of her growth. Like a parent. A parent loves a one-year-old when they're one years old, a two-year-old when they're two. A parent isn't expecting the five-year-old to do chores that they could only do when they're 16. And so God is the best parent, and he loves us right where we are. Look at you, you are beautiful. My beloved, so pleasing to me. He sees the desire she has in her heart to be pleasing to him. She isn't there yet, but he sees that she wants to be there. Look at you, you are so beautiful. Your eyes are like doves. When the doves mate, their eyes are so fixed on each other that they don't notice the things going on around them. What a picture of Jesus uh, fixing his eyes on us and what he wants us to do, fix our eyes on him so that we are not distracted by what's happening in other people's lives or the circumstances we're in or our problems even, that we can just be focused and fixed on him. And she gives her expressions of love back to him. Look at you. You are handsome, my beloved, so pleasing to me. The leaf-scattered ground will be our couch. The cedars will be the walls of our house. The cypress trees will be our rafters. I'm going to love you outside because you've made me your temple. You've made me your dwelling place so that it doesn't matter if I'm home scrubbing the floors or doing the dishes or I'm sitting by the river reading my Bible. I'm with you and you're with me. Wherever we go, the outdoors is wherever you are, I am. That's our temple and I'm worshiping there. Whatever I'm doing, I'm worshiping. I remember as a new believer having to work one Memorial Day. And I, um, I was so excited that this weight of sin was off my shoulders and I was clean and accepted and loved. And so when they told me I had to work, it was okay with me. I went into work pretty happy. I was singing in my heart. And I walked past the, the policemen who were getting coffee um, at the counter. And they weren't as happy to be working on a Memorial Day. And so one of them said to me, what are you so happy about? And I looked at him and it was as if all of a sudden I realized that I really didn't want to answer that. I didn't want to expose my private world to someone I didn't know. 
very well. And um, so I said, you know, really, I don't think you'd want to know. And I went off to give someone coffee. I came back and he goes, now I really want to know. You must tell me, why are you so happy? So I said, well, the weight of my sin is completely gone because of Jesus. I have come to know Jesus and it is a wonderful, wonderful thing in my heart. And he said, you're right, I didn't want to know. <laughs> it doesn't matter how people respond. We can love and be loved by our beloved all day long, every day if we choose. All these things she's pondering and it, so much is welling up inside of her and then her groom speaks to her and he says, look at you. You are beautiful, my true love. Look at you, you are so beautiful. Your eyes are like doves. The dove mates for life. When a dove finds a mate, that's it. And if that mate dies, then that dove lives singly because it, there's only one love in the dove's eyes and it only has room for one. And here is the believer with only room for one, her savior, and everything that in her life has to come in alignment with her savior in order to be able to stay there to get her attention as important.